Greetings, Guardians. My name is Byfear. So, the final encounter of King's Fall is something we all know well by this point. We fight the Taken King by stealing the brand of immortality, killing the Lighties, Rogers, and Knights, and then detonating the bombs so we can do some DPS. But since the times of Destiny 1, this encounter has actually been designed in a way that demonstrated the really complicated interplay between the forces of light and dark, and the exact method by which Oryx died. You'll have to take my word for it, given that we can't source the entire fight from our own archives, but there are bits in the Oryx fight in Destiny 1 that show us specifically that the final raid encounter isn't just a fight, it's a demonstration on a stage that's being performed before the witness itself. Oryx's defeat has always been one of the most spectacular moments in Destiny's history, and I'm going to break it down and show you how everything happened in that final room and why it's way bigger than most people realize. But first, a word from our sponsors at Outplayed, and also with a little bit of a look at this bad boy. The Macabre, which everybody has. Oh my goodness, what an amazing sniper. It's just a shame that I am terrible at PvP in practically every single possible imaginable way. Here's the thing though, you guys are good at PvP, I reckon. And without played, you can show that off, because it automatically records all sorts of things while you're playing the game in the background. It'll automatically record kills, headshots, and other key moments during your Crucible games. You can even share those highlights easily anywhere online, to say Discord or YouTube or Twitter. And then, even if you want to just cut out all of the nonsense between, you've got a video editor built into Outplay that you can just use to cut out all the nonsense. It supports over 300 games, and you can download it at the link below. Thanks again to Outplayed for sponsoring this video. Anyway, back to the lore. To really understand it all from the start, you need to acknowledge that at this point, Oryx's forces have been decimated. This matters because they've been tithing destructive power upwards towards him, and thus that power has evaporated. The power that he once drew from his legions, his shades, his court, his war priest, Golgoroth, his son, and his daughters is now gone. Oryx, in all his darkness, stands alone to face us in this moment. In this moment, we present the final and surest arguments for our supremacy under the sword logic to him, but we also present the logic of those arguments to the witness. We can tell this not just because of the law, but also because of the small and humble status bar in Destiny 1's version of the raid encounter as well as the effects whenever you wipe. So let's start with that wipe mechanic actually. When Oryx kills you in this encounter by clapping his hands, that wipe mechanic is called doxology. I'm not sure if that has translated from D1 to D2, but it certainly was in Destiny 1. This word is actually very important to understanding why Oryx kills us in this moment. The word doxology is defined as an act of praise towards a deity, which matters in this instance because that deity and the thing being praised is essentially the sword logic, it's the witness. Oryx explains this within the penultimate entry of the law books with this simple statement in verse 5-8, Worm Food. I have died many times, but these deaths were only temporary. If my echoes are killed, and I am killed in the material world, then I will be driven back to my throne, the Dreadnought. If my court and my throne can be beaten, if I am confronted in my throne, if I am defeated there, then I will die. My work will end. This is the pact to which I am bound, in particular by my study of the Tablets of Ruin and by my use of the power of the deep. When I call upon that power, I put myself up as the stakes in a wager. I gamble with my soul. For I am saying, listen my gods, I am the mightiest thing there is, and I prove it thus. You hear that? I am saying, listen my gods, I am the mightiest thing there is, and I prove it thus. That is the doxology. Oryx is calling forth to the witness and saying, lend me your power, for I am the mightiest thing here. And in this moment, as the text log shows up, there is a specific message that it comes along with, which is, Oryx calls upon the darkness. That is the moment when the doxology, the big clapping of the hands, really begins. It's when Oryx starts channeling that dark energy, and if you fail to react in time, that doxology kills you. 
This is our immediate sign that we need to be ready to rebuke him. He is putting all that he is in this moment, all of his power and fury and darkness up in the balance, and in doing so, he is praising the way of the sword logic. If he is not answered, the magnitude of his power proves itself to be true and our existence is forfeit. However, should we rebuke Oryx in this moment and prove him wrong, he is left vulnerable and weakened. It's in this moment that the Taken King is left vulnerable, for the laws of the sword logic upon which he has based his power have proven him to be lesser of a force than that which is displayed within his realm, in other words us. In Destiny 2, this heralds the start of a DPS phase. In Destiny 1, the bombs would detonate and would actually just deal damage to the Taken King directly, only driving home the point that Oryx's gamble on the doxology has failed. In Destiny 1, all this would cease at the point where the text log would then read, Oryx has regained favor with the darkness, at which point the Taken King would return to the field of battle and would inevitably move towards performing another doxology given the right amount of time, and after assaulting us with Light Eater Ogres and Light Eater Knights once more. All of this was a contest of wills conducted under the laws of the sword logic, but darkness alone was not present during the devastation of the Taken King. The light also played its part in a manner that's almost quite surprising. The main source of the light wasn't even our own, but was the stolen light that the Taken King had harnessed. When we slew the Light Eater Ogres during the encounter, we were left with something corrupted in our midst. We would, however, be able to interact with such power and set it free from its corruption. This detonation of light would be what rebuked Oryx. Oddly enough, showing such power in that moment as to compel the Sword Logic's great champion into submission. Toland even makes commentary on this in his final message to us as we leave the site of our great victory although he is certainly not happy about it. I was right at first. In the ever-expanding blighted place, even light must obey the sword logic. Even you guardians, you best and brightest of the dying dawn, you drew blood in honor of the Taken King. The war priest did his duty, and you did yours. Oryx was challenged, yes, but challenged in the way of the Hive which is to say that challenge is worship, is challenge is power. Sword Logic, you played your part well. You were not supposed to touch the light. How did you find your way into the King's Cellars? How did you even recognize that benighted draft for what it was? Do you not know that the Hive pursue light precisely for the purpose of devouring it with slathering jaws and slick, greedy, gulping throats? How did you take, or rather untake, the blighted light that Oryx gathered to offer in sacrifice to Akka and ignite it so that it burned and burned the darkness? It was barely light anymore. But you took it. And when you took it, you did not keep it. You set it free. This reveals perhaps the most remarkable thing about the entirety of the encounter with the Taken King, we both followed and subverted the rules of the contest against him that we had undertaken. We had unleashed the greatest of his stolen riches, and the corrupted light within was light that we set free. It was barely light anymore, but in freeing it, we enacted a power of our own. The sword logic is simple. The strongest thing shall survive. This would have been Oryx's doxology, put up against our power. He believed himself to be mightier, but our power was made manifold through liberation. The liberation of that which he had taken enacted our own logic. A logic not of darkness, but of light. As Marasov might call it, bomb logic. This is quite literally where we get this notion from. Not only was it something that was complex as opposed to simple, but it attained greater power through a combination of parts. Lighted light, freed only by guardians. That was the key to defeating Oryx. That was the key to defeating the doxology. In this way, we not only upset the architecture of a space that had written itself into time, but we rewrote the rulebook on how paracausal beings can interact with each other. We proved that the light and the bomb logic's complexity can in fact best the simple, tried and true power of sword logic. Domination is not the only way, as it would seem. Liberation can bring about a greater power if it is done correctly. 
And hopefully these little sentences give you just a little bit of an idea of the complex interplay between the mechanics of the light and the darkness that go on as we battle Dorix within the Dreadnought. And perhaps, even as it watched that day, the Witness beheld a force to reckon with in the form of the Guardians of the Last City. For we for the first time had done something that none prior to us had ever done, but for the Traveler. We had proved the Witness wrong. Even now, our victory over Oryx echoes through history, and the power we display is worth the consideration of beings beyond our comprehension. The Taken King has fallen, but his fall will not soon be forgotten. That's all from me for now. Thank you so much for watching the video. And if you did enjoy it, go ahead and leave a like. And if you want more Destiny content, hit subscribe and the bell next to subscribe to turn on those email notifications. Let me know down below in the comments section what you think of the final fight with Oryx. And in particular, do you reckon the Witness actually learned anything from this? I've always wondered personally if the Witness saw this encounter and realized that Guardians might be worthy vessels or even worthy disciples, ones that would walk in the path of its darkness. But again, that's just my own personal tinkering and thoughts. What do you think? Let me know. As per usual though, know that your viewership is quite enough for me and that in the meantime, my name has been My Name is Bife, Borodasia Arastra. I'll see you, Starside.